section number 3 talks of Athanasius of Alexandria. Athanasius was born in 296 AD and died in uh, 373 AD. Uh, he was the patriarch of Alexandria. Uh, patriarch, the Eastern Church leaders are called patriarch, the Western Church leaders are called Pope. Uh, he was the patriarch of Alexandria. He uh, made uh, co three contributions to uh, the practice and the theory of Christianity. Uh, he mm, supported or he, you can say that he uh, pushed the idea of Christian monasticism or the uh, monastic lifestyle and uh, he contributed to the development of the New Testament canon. Uh, towards his course of his life, Athanasius uh, worked and uh, wrote exclusively for the development of the doctrine of Christ. He uh, contributed massively for this particular uh, sphere of theology. Uh, he was a child of the of the pagan parents who were very influential, who were influential and were very well uh, comparing to the education that Athanasius of Alexander received. Uh, by that we can know that he was someone who came from a very uh, wealthy family and his parents also gave everything uh, for um, Athanasius to receive the best of education. They hired uh, specific tutors who were known uh, for their wisdom. So he was given uh, the best of everything for academics. You can say that uh, Athanasius became uh, very favorable or became very uh, close to uh, Alexander the Bishop of Palestine. Uh, Alexander the Bishop of Palestine what happens was uh, he saw the academic uh, style of Athanasius the child who was a, a child at that time. So Alexander took the responsibility of sponsoring every uh, bit of efforts for the development of Athanasius. You can say that basically Alexander sponsored Alexander sponsored Athanasius education. Uh, he took Athanasius with him and uh, he said that let him come with me and I will give him uh, the best education that uh, Palestine has to offer. So uh, Athanasius goes with uh, Alexander and mm, spends some time uh, together. So as uh, this boy Athanasius grows, uh, Alexander realizes that within this child re resides a great potential to be a spiritual leader, a great potential to be a church leader. Uh, he, uh, Alexander, he took Athanasius and he uh, entrusted Athanasius to uh, some of the best teachers, best teachers for the course of time and when Athanasius became an adult, uh, he came back to Alexander and Alexander appointed him uh, to be his uh, right hand person or to be his secretary. So wherever Alexander the Bishop of Palestine went, Athanasius followed him, Athanasius learned from him and both of these men, they shared a great uh, appreciation for one another. They never spoke uh, wrong about one another, they never spoke evil about one another. So both of them enjoyed a great deal of fellowship. As Athanasius was learning from Alexander, he was made a deacon uh, in Alexandria. He was made as a deacon in the church in Alexandria. Uh, Athanasius' contributions uh, happened to uh, focus more on the divinity of Christ. And uh, Athanasius was also the person who was responsible for contributing the theological thoughts in the Council of Nicaea, which happened in uh, 325. Uh, he was uh, asked by uh, Constantine I uh, to visit uh, the Council of Nicaea and where Alexander also went. So Athanasius accompanied Alexander to the Council and where uh, Athanasius uh, begins to introduce uh, the whole uh, doctrine of Trinity to the Council members. At this Council, uh, Athanasius, Alexander, they uh, took a very strong stance against Arianism. Uh, they began to uh, condemn or they began to uh, say negative things about Arianism. Uh, they supported orthodoxy and they suggested uh, action plan where uh, the document or the doctrine of uh, Trinity would be formulated and uh, revised. So uh, they gave ideas here and Athanasius he introduced uh, the concept of Trinity in this manner. He said that uh, the Arianism, it deny 
this uh, the divinity of christ but in reality christ was pretty much existing christ was pretty much available and shares the same office and essence with the father uh, he also said that the uh, three persons in the trinity are very much equal and are uh, in tune with one another or share the same uh, power and essence with each other and uh, he said that uh, arianism uh, does not have any solid chance because it is uh, made from weak arguments and these weak arguments are nothing but uh, can be refuted or can be challenged so uh, arianism does not have a stand here so uh, these two points he brought uh, gave lot of encouragement to the church leaders that uh, the doctrine of christ remains the same and unchanged and no power external power can destroy the uh, teachings uh, he also became he also became the next in line or you can say he became the next person to replace alexander uh, which very rarely comes like if a person or if a bishop is about to die or about to retire then a replacement is uh, search and put sometimes a replacement maybe a person who uh, is from a different place but here since athanasius was with alexander many people thought that if something happens to alexander athanasius should replace him and uh, the problem was athanasius was not a very mature person he was still a very young man uh, in his mid 30s and uh, the issue was to uh, make him a bishop if he was a, if he was to make a bishop he was very young so what they did was uh, they waited for him uh, to become a mature person and gradually uh, they uh, made him the uh, bishop after alexander said but here uh, as arianism began to die out it again began to grow very strongly and athanasius was uh, persecuted or athanasius was hunted down uh, by the arian party or the people who supported arianism they said that bring out that athanasius fellow and we'll burn him so athanasius what happened was uh, in order to save his life he began to he began to stay far away from the arian supporters uh, sometimes he was always caught and he was uh, put to trial and in the trial they spoke negatively about athanasius and uh, athanasius was uh, subjected to harsh punishment like to go and stay in the jungle for a set amount of years or months and uh, most of the time you can say that uh, the next 43 years Uh, he spent 18 years out of that 43 years in only exile uh, because the arian supporters were so much angry with him uh, despite that uh, athanasius continues to write uh, on the divinity or the doctrine of christ he continues to uh, push the agenda that uh, what we have been taught from our beginning is very much uh, correct and there is nothing error in that and uh, he continues to build arguments against arianism and says that Arianism has no hold upon Christianity, and this is what you need to avoid, or this is what you need to believe uh, on Christianity. So uh, he makes a comparison of both Christianity and Arianism, and makes Arianism look weaker in arguments, make weaker in uh, rationality, and make weaker in uh, theological points. So uh, people were able to see that uh, work of Athanasius and understood that Arianism is something which is a little bit weaker. compared to christian days and uh, people's faith uh, in christian uh, religion began to uh, become very strong athanasius was uh, always hiding from the arian supporters and gradually uh, when emperor valens came to the throne he uh, allowed athanasius to come back and serve as the bishop of palestine but uh, here athanasius was very tired or very old uh, from running away from all these people and finally he uh just remained as a quiet person he did not had any issues with any persons and continued to serve the church very uh, quietly and willingly so athanasius uh, made his life very uh, quiet at the same time he uh, was always very fearful and uh, some even say that athanasius kept an eye always open uh, while sleeping because he was always fearful that uh, the arian supporters might come and kill him in his sleep and Uh, so much so was the life of athanasius that he did not uh, meet with anyone or he did not speak with anyone but he continued to do his duties uh, he was a very able uh, church leader who was able to uh, 
a monitor or he was able to control some of the uprisings on Iranism and brought him under control. So, uh, Athanasius of Alexandria in lecture number three.